start at 225 Parson Street, the old Gibson building that has lots of memories for me. The building's 100 years old, and I'm almost there. A couple more years. I have so many good memories here. Oh, I can just feel it. I can see all the girls the, that wand the strings. They lined up by the window. And uh, I had my back to them, but I could hear them. It was uh, almost like a musical tune. They had a rhythm to them, you know, the way they wound them. It, it was uh, almost like a song. It was hard work. The, the good about Gibson was I had a job and I liked what I was doing. But other than that, there were, you know, you, you had to wait for the bell to ring to start working and wait for the bell to ring to punch out and uh, no breaks, uh, no uh, room to go rest in, you, you worked. And, uh, but isn't that funny? That I like, I like the job. And I knew everybody, I, most of them, and I made a lot of my best friends there. And uh, my cousin worked there, and friends, and, and the ones I didn't know became friends. So many memories, I don't know what to, what to think about first. <laughs> I got out of school in January, and it wasn't till spring or summer. I got a job at an ice cream place, Arctic ice cream. And uh, I stuck popsicles in bags. I, I did that all night long the first day. <laughs> and filled cartons. And uh, if we ran out of work, we scrubbed the walls and did anything to stay there. <laughs> but that only lasted in the summer. And I got a job at Upjohn's. I, I worked nights at first, and I liked that. And I thought, Boy, I wish I could get a day job. Well, I got one. I just hated it. Uh, the, the girls were snooty. They wouldn't even speak to me. And we had all the amenities, not like here, you know. We had nice restrooms and uniforms and everything. And I hated it so bad, I don't even remember what I did. So one day my mother said, well, Gibson called. You better go down there. And I said, hooray. <laughs> most of everyone thought I did the most foolish thing in the world. When Gibson called, I quit up. <laughs> I made the plain strings sitting down. And then uh, later on, I got to be a coiler. I liked that. You made them by the gross. And so you took a gross and lined them up on the counter. And uh, Helen was next to me. She had a big bag of BMO potato chips in between us. <laughs> And uh, you'd set up your little bags and boxes all in line and just keep going like this. It was fun. I uh, always managed to make my quota, but there were three or four uh, foot treadles for the single strings. And I didn't know until later I had to work twice as hard with my foot treadle because the one next to me was like a breeze. I don't know why, but she was absent one day, so I used hers. Whew, I went way over my quota that day. <laughs> We 
had good strings, we worked hard, but uh, I guess the people over us, I don't know what was in their heads. But anyway, I mean, you know, you gotta punch out and when the bell rings and all that silly stuff. So it, it was terrible hot. I don't, I have no idea what the temperature was because we didn't have any thermometers or fans or anything. But anyway, um, several of us had our quota done and we could make more. You can make a few cents more, but we were too tired and hot. So we weren't gonna make any more that day. And Helen says to me, uh, oh, I, I won't tell you what she said. She just said, let's get out of here. <laughs> and so uh, I, and then there were two other gals too. Uh, yeah, let's, let's leave. We got our work done. And I said, well, I think we better tell somebody or talk to somebody. Any other time they'd be marching through to check, see what we were doing, you know. Couldn't find anybody. But you know what I figured out afterwards? They had already gone home. <laughs> so we, we punched out before the bell rang. And uh, I think we probably went to a, a theater. That was the only place in the world that you could cool off. So I guess we went to a movie, I don't know. And uh, didn't think a thing of it, you know. Came back in the morning and uh, we had to start at seven and the, the office didn't open till eight. So I came to Arano, you know, I always came the last minute. And uh, here was uh, my friend sitting on the front step. <laughs> I said, what are you doing here? She says, you'll find out. <laughs> so I go in the back and start opening my bag so they can check me out, you know. And he said, you can't come in today. And I said, well, I've got my badge on. Here, you can look at all my stuff. Nope, can't come in. So I go out in front, sit on the step, <laughs> and gradually, Another gal, it ended up four of us sitting there. <laughs> so eight o'clock comes and they open the front door and come out in, you know. So we go in and we're all sitting there and I don't remember which guy it was, whether it was Guy Hart or somebody. And he just tells us we're all through because we left before the bell rang. And I thought, well, this is dumb. You know, <laughs> they don't even do this in school. <laughs> but anyway, uh, one of the gals, the first one that came, had already given her notice that she was quitting. And uh, that made me mad, because we all just sat there. Nobody said anything. And I thought, well, this really makes me mad. And I said, well, fire the three of us, but for crying out loud, let her quit. She already told you she's done. <laughs> no, it didn't make any difference. She's fired too. <laughs> so we came out and came by the railroad tracks. They wouldn't let us go back in the spring room at all. We came out and waved at all the girls making strings along there. <laughs> And they, oh, they were mad too. They were all gonna quit, but they didn't because they, they needed their job. Kalamazoo has a lot of memories. I think it's the best place in the world to, to be born and grow up in. <laughs>